Welcome to Bloomers in the Garden. I'm Len Schroeder. And I'm Julio Zamora. Today in our first segment, we received a call to the Bloomers in the Garden hotline from Doug from Bristol. Doug's wife purchased a rose that she wants to plant in a pot. We'll explain all about it in our first segment. Before you put away that mower, there are a few things to take care of. We'll tell you all about it and what to do in our second segment. We received a text to the Bloomers in the Garden hotline asking about overwintering cannas. It's a perplexing problem, which we'll explain in our third segment. Len and I love camellias, and they are some of the most beautiful flowers you'll ever see. Absolutely. And you can have them in the spring, and you can have them in the fall flowering, and Len has one that (laughs) flowers in the winter. (laughs) Brag about it all the time, like Uh my children. Yes, we do. So (laughs) we'll hear about that on our fourth segment. (laughs) Professor Steve comes to Bloomers every Saturday. Mm -hmm. And this past week, the discussion came up, where do the bees go in the winter? He called the question in to the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Hear Professor Steve's call and find out where the bees go in our final segment. So stay tuned, and we'll be right back in the garden right after these messages. Bloomers in the Garden is brought to you each week by Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Bloomers is an award-winning garden center just 20 minutes from Philadelphia. Bloomers has been providing expert advice turning brown thumbs green for over 30 years. At Bloomers, we want you to ask us every question, even if you think it's silly. We share information in a friendly, non-judgmental way that is meant to teach and spread the joy of gardening. Visit Bloomers Home and Garden Center in Washington Township, Gloucester County. For directions, go to bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. High Yield Brand Bone Meal contains 10% slow-release natural phosphorus. It helps all plants to develop sturdy root systems and stimulate healthy growth. You'll use it every time you plant bulbs. But it also is an excellent supplement fertilizer for roses, flowers, and vegetable gardens. High Yield Bone Meal is sourced from steamed bone meal, which provides a clean, natural source of phosphorus. High Yield is brought to you by VPG, the Fertilome people. You're listening to Bloomers in the Garden Radio. Listen anytime through your favorite podcast provider or see and hear us by subscribing to Bloomers' YouTube channel. Bloomers in the Garden Radio is heard in Philadelphia and throughout the whole Delaware Valley every Saturday. First, wake up with us at 6 a.m. on WNWR The Word at 95.3 FM and 1540 a.m. Tune in at 8 a.m. to Bloomers in the Garden Radio on Talk 860 WWDB. A rebroadcast of Bloomers in the Garden Radio is played each Saturday evening at 5 p.m. on The Word, 95.3 FM and 1540 a.m. On Sunday at 8 a.m., we can be heard throughout the New York tri-state area on Classic Oldies, 1250 a.m. WMTR. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you in the garden. Hey, welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Doug from Bristol called. We love it when we hear our listeners call. Thank you very much, Doug. Uh, And he called the hotline, and his wife purchased a rose that she wants to plant in a pot. Here, listen to his call. Hi, Bloomers in the Garden. Doug from Bristol, PA. My wife just purchased a coral knockout rose bush, end of season purchase. She would like to plant it in a pot. Can she do that now, and will it survive over the winter being in a pot outdoors? Or can you explain to me how I should set it up to survive? Thank you. Have a great day. Love your show. Very informational. Thank you very much. Thank you, Doug. Yeah, we appreciate that. Um, Hey, it's not too hard, especially since it's a knockout rose, type of shrub rose and the coral knockout. Very pretty. Pretty. Very pretty. Coral knockout. You can get an idea. It's like that pinkish. It's like a pinkish color. But planting it so that it stays in a pot, let's start from the bottom up. How about that, Julio? Yeah, that's what we You have to make sure that you have a pot that is big enough that it can live there for a while. Don't, like, plant it in a pot that's the same size as the the roses in now. You've got to give at least two, three, four inches wider on each side and give it some room to grow down in. So that's going to be a pretty big pot. My guess is, well, I'm not sure where he bought it. So usually they come in two- and three-gallon sizes, and those are actually pretty big, um, you know, because they're meant to grow in in the ground. But you really have no issues. You see that pot that that is in today? It's 
always been in a pot. It's <laughs> never been in the ground. And that uh, whether it's going over the winter or started as a little baby, you know, it just progressively gets into a larger and larger pot. So here's what you need to do. One, get the pot that's big enough. But ask where you get it, and preferably at your local garden center. Ask them if it's fired at a high temperature so that it is a frost-resistant pot. That's very important. Otherwise, that it will freeze outside, the soil will expand, and it'll crack that pot, and you'll be replacing it. Uh, it, It's... It all has to do with the firing temperature. Like when we buy pottery at Bloomers, we go and we check to see. It's like, okay, like, is this a a pot that is frost resistant? Is it, you know, if it's a, um, if the temperature ranges, is it, it's fired at a very high temperature? Because some of these places where we get pottery, you know, it's sometimes in Mexico, we get pottery in Mexico, we get pottery in Vietnam, we get it in China. We even get some domestic pottery. But the issue is, it's like in Mexico, they'll use actually wood-fired kilns to make the pottery, and that just doesn't get hot enough to make it so that it cures at a temperature that will be frost-resistant. We don't get much of it. And a lot of times, uh, we'll put any frost-sensitive um, pottery that that'll be for indoor plants and uh, you just have to have to find that out, and it's important to know. Uh, yes, you could use plastic, but that's still subject to expanding and splitting. So you just got to be aware that do something, um, you know, check that out first. So it's all about the pot. Yeah. But then you want to put in fresh soil. Uh, I, I've got an issue. I've got, yeah. I've got, I have to replace all my soil, soil. and all my pots this yeah. year. And that uh, you want to use fresh soil and you want to use a good potting blend. Uh, Anything that has been from coast of Maine Mm -hmm. um, or something. uh, Yeah, the Spoma, an excellent potting soil. Don't use the junk from the grocery Uh, store. You know, it's like, oh, I got it cheap. It's like, that's because it's, you know, (laughs) you know, it's, you know, almost dirt. So (laughs) you want to get a good quality potting mix. Mm -hmm. Because that will hold moisture. Um, we all are going through this this time of drought right now. It is unbelievable. I think oh. we're close to a month without no, any rain. substantial no, no. rain. Yeah, uh, when I was gone, we didn't, it didn't rain. I, I yeah. took a, some time off recently, and I was down south. No rain. Did we we didn't get any rain when no, I was no. gone? No. No. No rain. No, no rain. No. no. Maybe a, a small bit of precipitation but not much at all you know i was watching the news the other day and it was raining in new york i'm like all right it's gonna come and we're gonna get rain that never came um so anyway make sure that you get a good a good blend and like julio said espoma or coast of maine soils uh, master nursery soils always excellent excellent soils and that it has a good blend so it gives drainage but also will hold moisture uh you want to make sure you do that um the next step is to plant it. You don't want to plant it too deep. All too often, we see issues where where plants are planted below the soil line. And some people think, that, oh, that's a good idea. You know, it's going to grow and it'll grow. And, and that's not it. it. What happens is that it will take around where the plant is coming out of the existing soil ball and it'll rot that uh, basically the stems or that's coming out and and where that becomes an issue and it kills the plant and you're always struggling trying to take care of it. You're thinking it insect diseases or anything, but no, you just planted it too deep. Too deep so yeah. it's a simple thing. So you want to plant it at the level of the top of the, of the soil that it's at now or even slightly raised because you're going to have some settling that goes on. And uh, my daughter called me the other day in that we – we put it in our landscape, and she goes, do I still need to water? It's like, you worked here. You know, <laughs> you're like, right. supposed to know this. Um, you're going to be watering it yeah. to the point where the ground freezes solid. You know, once we get that ground freeze, frozen solid, then it's time to stop because your rose is still going to put on some root growth. 
And it may not be enough to anchor into that new soil. That's going to happen in the spring, but it's going to be setting out some root hairs that are going to be growing, and you want that moisture to be there because you definitely don't want it to be dried out going into the winter. That's the key because the winter winds are the things that are are the worst for any plant, any plant, because it dries out, you know. (laughs) It's going to sound kind of gross, but do you, know, do you ever notice that you get bloody noses in the winter? Yeah, you do. And it's because the it's so dry, and that's the same thing. It's happening to plants and everything else. They're so dry that they don't they don't have the moisture. And going in, and we're going to lose a lot of plants this this fall and winter because people think that oh, it's fall, so you don't need to water. water. They put away all their uh, hoses. Yeah, all your hoses are away, (laughs) which is smart, and that's going to be on a list that we'll have for you, but not yet. Not yet. Um, You know, the guys are right now, you know, kind of, you know, blow out your sprinklers. (laughs) It's like, you better have that last watering. It better better be be in there. (laughs) (laughs) You've got to water, 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 continue to water. Um, your lawn wants that water. Every, everything needs that water right now because it hasn't gotten it naturally. And we usually say fall is a naturally rainy season. Well, not this one. <laughs> not this one. <laughs> yeah. Not this one. Yeah, so, um, and then if that continues in the spring, oh. that's a problem. Yeah, real problem. So you're going to plant it. You put it in. But one thing when you plant it, make sure that you push down on the sides of the plant and that you eliminate any of those air pockets. You don't want it to be light and fluffy. You want to compress it in around that root ball so that there's no air pockets because then, again, those air pockets, again, are dry, and they need to get around that plant. And you want to push it in really hard and get it. But as far as the rose goes, especially like a um, the a shrub rose, like a knockout, they can take growing in a pot without any problem, without any problem. Um, don't be afraid to prune it. It's one of those plants, and, they, and they, depending on how big it is, because you don't want it to become a sail to where the top growth is so big that it n- rolls, rolls the pot over. over. Yeah, yeah. You don't want that, but you do want to um, let it go dormant on its own because you, you want to have, like even in your regular roses, you want them to go to rose hips where their flowers are. I've got a rose um, near my garbage can. <laughs> I've got the best gar- best landscape around my garbage can. But, uh, yeah, it's beautiful. It is. Uh, that is has its best flowering right now, and I'm going to let it go into rose hips and let it go dormant. And I won't spray. I won't prune it until we get into say February March to do winter pruning. So I would leave it go um, only if it's you know, got issues with as far as pruning it goes. If it's going to be too big to where it's going to catch the wind, um, I would prune it. But honestly, that's going to be pretty rare. Would you give it some protection from, from the, you know, from the uh, winds? If it was a different rose, being it's a knockout, it's okay. You know, I think it's okay, but um, it might not be a bad idea to, to instead of keep, like if you have it on a concrete porch, Mm -hmm or patio or something like that, I would put it maybe into a landscape bed to where the the bottom holes of the pot are actually getting some moisture from the ground. You know, Mm -hmm. make sure that that pot for the winter is touching the soil, and then you can mulch up around around the pot. So that's that's something to do. Um, Kind of protect that a little bit. Yeah, but uh, it is... um, you know, when they're grown in the nursery, that they are covered uh, in a in a non-heated greenhouse. So the temperatures are getting there. They're just protected from the wind. They're just protected from the wind. So they're getting the same temperatures that your rose is going to get, except it, it's the humidity that's held in by those great big long 300-foot greenhouses that, again, they're Quonset house that have no um, no heat in them. So keep keep that in mind. But uh, so, you know, winter wind is the worst. Winter, right. So, and, and then you talked about, you know, because it's going to grow, you know, you have to repot it, you know. Eventually. Eventually. You know, yeah. I think you can probably get two years, two years out, out of it. it. Yeah. You can get two years out of it. And you have to take care of it just like a regular oh, yeah. rose. Yeah, you Insect it. diseases don't just say, oh, it's in a pot, so we don't have to worry about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, you do. Mm-hmm. You know, and, yeah. and I would spray it. And, and it's easier to spray because you've got one rose. Yeah. 
and it it it, it will be beautiful. Mm-hmm. It will be beautiful. So. Um, Got to fertilize it too, and yes, that, absolutely. You know, and that water is going to be going through. Yep, a, a spoma rose tone, mm-hmm. organic, slow release. There are other um, combination products where it's an insect disease and fertilizer. I would honestly do that, but I would also spray it with a systemic insecticide, uh, a combination of the two, because um, you want to just make sure you keep it. You know what we say in the industry, clean, and that means you don't want to start getting any black spot or any other diseases that will get into it and grab hold because trying to fix that problem is harder than if you just Start doing do it. your maintenance in the beginning. So preventative maintenance is the key. Don't let it start getting disease issues, insect issues, and then pl- you're playing catch up all the time. Right. And then watering is critical. So you use your finger probe to find out whether or not you need to water. Yep, stick it in. in. It's moist in the first couple inches. You let it go. Um, And then it's going to be, it's going to need more water than your roses in the ground. So it's just going to be, it's going to be like a, you know, a a potted Potted. combo pot or anything else. You're going to need to water it right. Keep an eye on it. Yep. All right. We've got uh, some messages and we'll be back right after that. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Dreaming of a gorgeous garden? Give your azaleas, rhododendron, blueberries, and evergreens a powerful boost with the number one acid-loving plant food, Espoma Organic Holly Tone. Hollytone is a perfect blend of natural long-lasting ingredients that nourish plants for stronger roots, faster growth, and bountiful blooms. Plus, it's easy to use and safe for people, pets, and planet. Visit Espoma.com for a retailer near you and helpful gardening tips. Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. If you're like me, then you absolutely love birds. The Bird Sanctuary at Bloomer's Home and Garden Center has you covered. They're dedicated to the care and eating of wild birds of all sorts. Want to bring more birds to your yard? Then you got to see this place. Bloomer's has a huge flock of feeders, birdhouses, bird seed, and much, much more. Want to feed the birds and not the squirrels? They have this absolutely cool bronze bird feeder that will drive those sneaky squirrels nuts. They'll be moving to the next door neighbor in no time. OMG! Bloomers have these absolutely adorable birdhouses that will turn your yard into the perfect bird B&B. They carry all types of wild bird seed, suet, seed cakes, and mealworms. Bloomer stocks, Lyric, Coles, CNS, Pine Tree Farms, and much, much more that will keep those beautiful birds coming back for more. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center is located in Washington Township in Gloucester County. For more information and directions, check them out on the web at bloomers.com. Bloomer's Home and Garden Center, you got to see this place. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Well, I know you you can't wait to put your mower away, and uh, but you know there's a lot of th- you know right now it's still warm out, you know, and and the grass is still growing, so it's pretty yeah. uh, pretty good to still yeah. uh, have that mower out and cut it's, your grass. Yeah, I mean, I see my guys, I know that I'm going to get a bill. It's like, oh, oh, you, do you really need to cut my weeds? <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's only like a portion of my lawn that's still green. <laughs> How about your zoysia? Is your zoysia oh, turned yet? Yeah. It's, turned. it's brown? Oh, yeah. It's brown. How long has it been brown? Oof, been about, I'd say a couple of weeks at least. A couple of weeks? Yeah. Vera brown? Maybe that's a, your lawn brown? 
<laughs> yeah, it was brown. <laughs> we know, we know, you and Julio yeah, we have are Zoysia name. fans. <laughs> we belong to the Zoysia club. <laughs> That's right. Well, you know, it's, it's, you need to cut it. And that when you get, you're, we're getting close. I mean, we had some really cold, I think it was 35 degrees this, this, uh, here in South Jersey, uh, Northern Jersey, I think was close to the same. Um, our weather is almost identical. Some of the areas in Pennsylvania and our listening area that, that they have gotten colder than, than we have, but, uh, it's still, we're right there. We're, we're almost there where, where it's the soil temperature that's the key. Soil temperature right now is warm. I mean, it's, uh, you know, the weather has been ridiculously warm. Um, like I told you, I went down south. Mm-hmm. It was the same temperature here that it was there, there? you know, yeah. here. So I was oh, keeping an eye on it. I wasn't yeah. worried about my sp- our sprinkler system oh, freezing. Mm-hmm. But... Here's what you need to do. When your grass stops growing, and if you have a lawn like mine that it has turned colors because it's mostly crabgrass, shoemaker syndrome is what they call that. That's what it's called. Shoemaker syndrome where, you know, the shoemaker has the worn out shoes because he doesn't have time to fix his own. That's that's where that comes from. Um, but here's what you need to do. Your last cut that you're going to do, you want to lower your mower to the lowest level you can without scalping your lawn. Scalping your lawn means that you take off the crown where the growth comes from of the grass blade. So you want to keep it, lower it all the way down, but you don't want it that low to where you're scalping your lawn because you're kill, you're going to kill that whole section. Um, you're going to rake up. You want, why do we rake leaves? I don't like raking leaves because yeah. I have trees where they like never, it's, I have oaks, so yeah. oh. they and never it ending. Never ends, yeah. um, but why do we rake leaves? Mm-hmm. And that we want to mulch them if you have a mulching mower or stuff, but you don't want them to mat down over and suffocate the lawn. It'll harm the lawn, it'll kill the lawn, it'll choke out the lawn, it'll add diseases. So you want to rake your leaves, bring them to, Hopefully you have a, a municipal program where they'll come and get your leaves and bring them to the side. Um, if you have a, like I have one of those stand-up mowers oh, yeah. where you go, you get a tarp, you rake them all onto the tarp, and yeah. you step on the tarp and you drag it to the yeah. end of the street. Right. So that way it's a little bit easier. It's not like you try to convince your kids to, to do it. but. That never was successful for me. Uh, anyway, <laughs> no, no. Um, you can do some winter seeding. like So after oh, yeah. you cut that down, you want to make sure that it is grass seed and not turns into bird seed because the birds eat it. So you do need to cover it. Uh, most important, if you have some bare areas, you need to get it in contact with the soil. Most important. Uh, birds are hungry and their their natural food sources are slowly disappearing. Uh, we talked a few weeks ago about making sure that you allowed your, uh, like, say, cone flower and black-eyed Susans to just stay, let those flower heads stay so that they are food for the birds. Don't cut, cut them, them back. back. Don't cut them back. So one of the most important things is that when you put your mower away, you're not done. You want to take off your blade and get it sharpened so that you have a super sharp blade starting in the spring. A lot of times people will come in, they'll they'll say, hey, how come my lawn, it's got this like white sheen to it. And it's because what's happening is their blade of their mower is so dull that it's just whipping the the tops of the, the grass off and it's shredding them. It's not cutting them. And that that's because they're, they're, blade on their mower is just so dull. Uh, also, make sure uh, you don't want to empty your gas tank on your mower, but what you do want to do is add fuel stabilizer and it protects the engine. Um, I talked to a engine repair guy and he said, oh yeah, I have a lot of work from that. I get a lot of, you know, I get a big income from that. And so, it, the point was is that use the stabilizer and then that will because when you start it you gum up all the works of the of the engine and so again you need to put the fuel stabilizer 
in the engine of all of your equipment, whether it's, you know, your mower, blower, or your, your weed whacker. Yeah. 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 So it's, uh, but it's not, mm-hmm. we're not there yet. Yeah. We're not there yet. And like we talked about in the first segment, you still need to water. Yeah. You still need to water. Yeah. Um, it, it's coming to where it's going to be cold and you've got to get your sprinkler blown out. You know, talk with your sprinkler uh, person who does your blowout and just make sure that they know that you want it later than sooner. Anybody who's gotten it done yet. And honestly, I haven't seen too many. You know, usually you're driving yeah. through the neighborhoods or whatever and you see, see like it. that it looks like fog coming out of the, the, the sprinklers. Sprinkler. I haven't seen that yet. Yeah. So um, weather is a little different this uh, this autumn. So, but it's coming. Oh, yeah. It's coming. Before you know it. It's coming. It is. You know it's close. coming? Yeah. Got to change your clocks. Oh, yeah. That's right. Got to change your clocks oh, tomorrow. We, we get it. Sunday. We add an hour, right? It's, or we lose so an hour. It's, it's fall, back. fall fall ahead, spring back. Spring back. I it used to always make me mad because we when we're the most tired in the spring because we're busy. Other way around. Fall uh, back. Uh, fall. Fall back. Let me, let me finish. Oh. So I that's right. That we would always lose an hour hmm. when we're the most tired in spring. Yeah. <laughs> so we get an extra hour when we do it when we do it, we do it in uh on Sunday. Sunday yeah. So so I guess it's we'll Saturday we'll night be to be technical. What well, you know what I mean. Yeah. You know, you sleep everybody all. comes to church early on. Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, what are you doing here? Like, hey, look at this. Everybody's made it on time. <laughs> Wait, you're here for Sunday school and not service? Yeah. <laughs> on time? Yeah, right. He's the only one in the parking lot. There, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just, anyway, uh, so um, just make sure that you, you're still uh, you're still working that sprinkler uh, and, um, again, it's uh, it's coming. It's gonna go dormant. So, and also, don't forget about your landscape plants. You want to saturate that that bed and make sure your landscape beds are filled with water. Your perennials, everything, because the damage that occurs from dry winter is gonna happen throughout the winter. So you want them to go in to be fully hydrated going into the winter months. Anything to add, Julio? Yeah, um, I, I do have a mower, but it's uh, battery powered, by the way. A battery, good yeah. for you. And you yeah. said you like it. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, yeah it's quieter. Well, yeah. it is smaller though. Well, but yeah. still, did you get a? Can well, you've got a smaller lawn? Yeah. It doesn't can you matter. can you cut it? Oh yeah, within 40, 45 minutes. Yeah. If, Forty-five minutes. Yeah. It works with Zoidja. Yeah, I put it on high, high. On high, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, yeah, it makes yeah. it look like he's doing something. Yeah. It, looks, it looks like it's cut. Your brother. Andy, look, I cut the grass, you know. Could you get out in here and help? <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, uh, anyway, that's a thought. That's a thought. So Christmas is coming, so put it on your Christmas list. <laughs> you hear that, Charmaine? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, your, your yard is gigantic. Yeah, you but get, that's for the front. That's, that's for the front. I have a ride on it for the. Okay. I use for the back. Oh, but that's great. For the front, I definitely. I, I, it's just too hard to How old drive is my Deuce? ride on. <laughs> <laughs> he, <laughs> Six. He <laughs> can't wait to get on that <laughs> mower. Right. I yeah. can't well, wait. He sits on my lap, right? There you go. But, uh, for the front of the house, it's kind of hard. Right. It's just yeah. I have too many curves and. Yeah. Oh. It's it's rough with the front, so I definitely want to get something else with my front. You hear that, Charmaine? Yeah. <laughs> Christmas is coming. <laughs> or Black Friday, one or the other. Yeah. All right, we'll be back <laughs> in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609 609- 685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880, and we'll see you in the garden. 
We are proud to announce that Bloomers in the Garden has partnered with Renewal by Anderson of Greater Philadelphia, Delaware, South Jersey, and Southern Maryland. Renewal by Anderson is the top window and door company in the United States, specializing in replacement windows and doors. You might be thinking right now, what the heck do windows have to do with gardening? Well, Renewal by Anderson makes this beautiful garden bay window that's energy efficient and made from recycled materials. It's perfect for growing the finest indoor plants possible. When you are looking out your windows filled with plants in your beautiful garden, you don't want to see old windows that are cloudy, warped, or even rotting. That's why people in the horticulture community love Renewal by Anderson. Not only do we want our gardens to be beautiful, but their homes as well. Renewal by Anderson participates in horticultural events such as flower shows, earth days, and eco fairs. To get more information and set up a free home consultation, please visit www.philadelphiawindow.com. And be sure to tell them Bloomers in the Garden sent you. Is she gone? Nope, she's still standing there. What is she doing? I think she's watching the grass grow. (gasps) That's our job. I know, right? She's watching the grass grow, the flowers grow. Ooh, look, the trees are growing. Can't say as I blame her. Remember where she bought all this stuff? Duh, bought us there too. Bloomers Home and Garden Center. Find us online at bloomers.com. Welcome back to Bloomers in the Garden. Hey, we received a very smart text uh, to the Bloomers in the Garden hotline about overwintering cannas. Here's what they had to say. I have a question. I have been planting cannies for about 12 years every year. I dig them up, clean them off, being bring them into my, ba- my basement last year. I I experimented by keeping them in the ground, and they did better than the uh, the ones that I replanted in the spring. In the spring, is that because our winters are getting warmer, or are they adaptable that I should be leaving them in the ground every year? I do mulch every every year after I cut them down. Ah, that's interesting. That is. Um, is Some cannas are more hardy than others. And that they don't have to be dug up. So when you get that little tag, don't throw it away. Take a look to see what hardiness zone they are. Because there are a lot of cannas that are hardy to zone 5. Okay, And that's some of our um, some of our northern listening area, like some of the western parts of Pennsylvania, up in uh, northern west New Jersey, uh, also... Um, into some of the areas of uh, New England, uh, that folks that listen to us in, in Connecticut, and that they can take that. Like southern New Jersey is zone 7, and 5 is, you know, it's cold. It's cold. So here, here's a couple of varieties to look for. Wyoming, Faison, and Bengal tiger are all hardy in those zones. But uh, here's a general rule. If you have cannas and you you live in, you know, most of them are zone eight. And then you can also, like zone seven, you can kind of get away with cutting them back after they get hit with a hard frost and then mulch over top of them. So you're kind of like insulate, put on like an, an insulation blanket of mulch. And that they'll stay. Um, I actually, you, you see a lot of cannas, I think it's kind of funny, that in a cemetery. My cannas that I planted in the cemetery did not come back well. And I'm not exactly sure why. But when we're having this kind of weather where it's dry and they're going into the season dry... You need to make sure that you water them because they're, it's going to be harder for them to come back. And your observations of a warmer winter is like we don't want to get into the the fight as far as like oh there's climate change uh, or what have you. It, it they winters have been warm and that. But I remember just a few years ago that I have never seen where I live, Washington Township, New Jersey, in southern New Jersey, in Gloucester County. It was zero, yeah, zero. Zero, not like five below, five degrees or 10 degrees. That's cold enough, but it was zero. So year to year, it's different. If we get zero, your cannas are dead. Um, and your things that are, that 
aren't new normal for our range, things like crepe myrtles. They're going to be dead down to the ground, and then they'll come back up from the roots. But it's not going to be the way that it's been the last few years where they're coming out. So cold, cold weather can actually kill them. Most of the um, the cannas are zone 8, but you've got to check. You can check on, on your tags and see if you're not sure. You know, you're going to need to dig up your cannas after they get their first frost. Let them get hit by a frost. A frost is like a, a, a or, or their first freeze, I should say. A freeze is like a switch. It kind of turns off the, the growth mechanism in a plant. A frost damages it. It can still grow past it. Where a freeze, it like shuts the plant down. The plant naturally shuts down. It's like, all right, we're done. Mm-hmm. And that after a freeze where it hurts, damages the, the foliage, that's the time to dig up your cannas. You're going to cut the off the top. You're going to take a fork, dig them out of the ground. You're going to brush as much of the soil off as you can. And that uh, you're going to, and now this may sound strange, but you're going to roll them up in newspaper because that's going to absorb some of the moisture so that they don't rot while you have them stored over winter. And then you're going to maybe put a little bit of dry peat moss in with that them and put them in a, a paper bag. And then you're going to leave them, put them in the coolest place you can in your home without it freezing, and then store them dark is best. And then in the spring, you plant them. Usually it's going to be in the beginning of May. You don't want to plant them too early because the soil temperatures are going to be you know, pretty cold for them because they don't really start growing until the soil temperatures get a little bit warmer than we get. So don't be too anxious to put them in. But again, if you're buying some for next year, take a look on those tags and see if you're buying something that's in zone five or even zone seven, um, you know, you can probably get away with them being overwintered. But the key is, is to giving them a blanket of mulch and that will make the difference. So you you don't have cannas, right? Yeah, no. I planted pan- cannas in pots, and I've got I've got some elephant ears in pots that okay. I've got to to dig up and save. So I haven't treated them very well. They're very dry, like the rest of everything else. But again, get them so that they've absorbed some water. You've got a little bit of a chance right now. Um, freeze is coming. Freeze is coming. All of a sudden, you're going to go outside, and it's going to be 28 degrees, and you're going to say, "What happened?" So. Anything to add, Hole? No, he sounds like he's having success. Yeah, what he, yeah. What so he has. Uh, the, the key that he's doing is he's over he's over mulching them. Yeah. But again, um, don't think that there's something wrong if all of a sudden one year they don't come back. It could be just that they got hit by that uh, freeze, and instead of like again, what's the frost layer? Frost layer in in our area is like eighteen to twenty four inches. So you know, it gets down that far in that freeze la- layer. So it could be one of those years that that happens. Yeah. But you never know. But again, you never know. Um, the dis- disturbing the soil, digging them up, putting them back in, potential of them rotting over the season, over the, the while they're stored, that is all a possibility. Yeah. So check your tags. Check your tags before you buy. Buy some that are a little bit more... Um, of a, um, hold hold. Uh, of, hold hold. yeah, the lower the number, the better. And then also their plants, not puppies, just replace them next year. That's right. You got a lot out of them. You know, we don't have to talk about the price of a happy meal, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> considering, you know, what you're putting out, what you get back, maybe replacing them is the best thing. Yeah. Anyway. All right. We'll be back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. 
If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Bartolome's Triple Action contains 70% neem oil and 0.25% pyrethrins as a concentrate and ready to spray. It is an insecticide, fungicide, and miticide label to use on vegetables, fruits, nuts, herbs, spices, and ornamentals. This organic OMRI-listed product controls a wide variety of insect pests and diseases, including aphids, scale, spider mites, white flies, rust, leaf spot, and powdery mildew. This insecticide is an all-in-one bottle that will cure just about any problem you may run into throughout the year. Fertilome's Triple Action has been helping gardeners across the country for years. Best to apply in late evening and early morning hours. Mix one ounce, which is equivalent to two tablespoons in a gallon of water. The best part is Triple Action may be used up to the day of harvest. So the next time you are visiting your favorite garden center, Ask for Fertilum's triple action and expect to have the best looking plants in the neighborhood. Fall is for planting. Visit Bloomer's Nursery and let one of Bloomer's nurserymen help you lay out your next landscape project. Bloomer's has the finest selection of fall flowers. Hardy mums in multiple sizes, celosia, coxcomb, winter pansies, ornamental peppers, ornamental kale and cabbage, and all types of grasses. Bloomers has a frightening large selection of face pumpkins, flat stacking pumpkins, gourds, and fall decorating items. Come visit Bloomers, the store behind the radio program, open seven days. Go to www.bloomers.com. That's www.bloomers.com. Welcome, Welcome back. back to Bloomers in the Garden. <laughs> yes. One of our favorite, and we love this plant. Yes, uh, we do. Really. It's a camellia, and... Uh, a lot of folks don't know about it that much because uh, they don't. Yeah, and also our last segment that a lot of the camellias weren't hardy in Open our Syria. listening zone, but yeah. now they are. Yeah. So, you know, they're yeah, they're you uh, up in you. I've seen them in New York. In oh parks, yeah, you know. Yep. So it's amazing what they're doing. You know, there's uh, hardies that are able to do zone five, five. Yeah. and if you're wondering what your zone, hardiness zone is, uh, just Google or search USDA hardiness map, and it will bring up your area across the country, and you'll see, you know, what zone five is, seven is, and they actually are reduced to like seven A or seven B, and and those kind of things. Camellias are are kind of like a broadleaf evergreen, similar to a rhododendron, PJM. Uh, I don't consider them as azalea as much because their azaleas are more compact um, and grow more bushy. bushy yeah. That's all bushy. Yeah. I don't like people. Do you have any bushes? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh boy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, but camellias, yeah. they flower in the fall. Yeah. And that uh, they're somewhat tolerant of clay soil, mm-hmm. but they do grow best in, in a well-draining soil with, Lots of organic matter. So remember, plant them the way that we tell you. Dig the hole twice the size of the bottom. Add half a soil amendment like bumper crop and half your existing soil. Mix it all together. Pack it all around the roots. So you're doing like a 50-50 mix. Um, They will take sun, but they do better in semi-shade. And that's because the winter sun will burn them up. Um, They don't like that. And our sun changes as you, you look outside uh, today, you know, you know that there's less sun and it's not because of daylight savings time It's it's, there's just less sun naturally be based on the tilt of the earth and so many things that we, we, we need to get, uh, we need to get our, our, our Harold, on. Harold, yeah. Harold explain all that all for this, us. Uh, yeah. Um, our NASA scientist, mm. uh, <laughs> I I always think it's funny that Harold is such a nice guy, but he likes plants that eat, eat like you know, yeah. that are like carnivorous, <laughs> carnivorous plants. Yeah. He <laughs> He's a that. nice he man. That, yeah. uh, Harold yeah. is a, a listener that's in Staten Island, and he is an expert on uh, carnivorous plants. Yeah, um, and that I have to mention, his son Max is uh, his son 
is uh, in here in Philadelphia. He is the weatherman on the uh, CBS News. Anyway, back to camellias. When you plant them, also it's um, if they're in semi shade where the in the winter sun is not going to hit them. That also it's less of a temperature fluctuation, and it also goes down to, to basically drying. Uh, I am bold and talk about my Yule Tide oh, yeah. <laughs> blooming, and I I post uh, uh, pictures on to our Facebook page of my blooming January blooming. Uh, Yuletide camellias that are, uh, of course, next to my garbage cans. Um, that, they're by my garage, okay? They're by my in garage. When I pull in, uh, they see them, and then I go through the garage door, and there they are, and I get to enjoy them that way. I never use the front door. I don't think I have many people that use the front door. No, I don't <laughs> think so either. <laughs> so, in any you case. see the trash cans. But they're beautiful. <laughs> you don't see that. You don't go past the trash cans to get into the house when you go through the garage. I have a nice little fence there with a nice bike that's hanging from them. Anyway, but Yuletide is a great variety that blooms through the winter. And that, you know, those winter days where it, it you know, and, and nights where, where it does it get touches around 32, they'll, su- they'll survive, the flowers will survive that. If it's in the 20s, you'll get like one day out of the flowers, but it's covered in flowers. So it this happens all the way from December, Yuletide, right? Get it? Yuletide, Christmas, all the way through February. So I've still have flowers and, and it, to me, it's a miraculous thing. It's Amazing. just the wonder of plants. Yeah. I go out, get your. If you can find camellias at this time of the year, go to your local garden center. Ask them, do they have any camellias? And are there any fall varieties? They do best when planted in the fall, uh, and that there are spring varieties as well. So, one thing I do suggest is you're going to spray them with an anti-transparent which encapsulates the moisture into the plant. And it's called Wilt Stop that you're going to use uh, by Bonide. It's a, it's a great uh, thing that is underused in the horticultural gardening community. So again, go get a camellia, plant it in the ground, put it in a protected, like a wind protected area, and you'll be amazed on how beautiful it is. Because it doesn't look like a rhododendron or azalea. It looks completely different. So... Again, and different colors, different everything colors. from white to pink to, to you know, mm. that deep red with yellow centers. Oh, yeah. It's awesome. Great plant. Mm-hmm. Camellias, plant one today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we'll be back in the garden right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609 609- Six eight five one eight eight zero. That's six zero nine six eight five one eight eight zero. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text six zero nine six eight five one eight eight zero. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers T-shirt. Call or text us at six zero nine six eight five one eight eight zero. That's six zero nine six eight five one eight eight zero, and we'll see you in the garden. Here's the dirt on potting mixes. They're not all created equal. A Spoma organic potting mix gives roots the ideal balance of air and moisture. It contains a special blend of beneficial mycorrhiza to help grow stronger roots bigger plants, and more bountiful blooms. Try a Spoma Organic Potting Mix indoors and out for all your potted flowers, vegetables, and you'll see why it's the best. Visit espoma.com for a retailer near you. Organic Potting Mix from Espoma, a natural in the garden since 1929. Your next houseplant is waiting for you in Bloomer's Home and Garden Center's greenhouse. Bloomer's recognizes that houseplant choices are as important to your interior decorating as the fabric on your couch. The right plant, paired with the perfect container, can bring a dynamic change to your home. A houseplant brings life to your world and connects your home's interior to the greater outdoors. Even a small succulent placed on your coffee table has a way of connecting your living room to the Amazon rainforest. How about an air plant in your kitchen? Looking for an indoor flowering plant to add color to your plant palette? Bloomers has a large, revolving assortment of flowering beauties. From aglaonemas to zizi plants, 
Bloomer's Greenhouse is stocked with your next favorite indoor plant. Bloomer's carries a large selection of pottery and containers to match your home's decor and make any of your plants more beautiful. Bloomer's experts can help you care for your plants and have the fertilizer, insecticides, leaf shine, and specialty soils you need to grow healthy and happy indoor plants. Visit Bloomer's Home and Garden Center's greenhouse and make every room in your home a living room. Visit bloomers.com for more information. That's bloomers.com, and we'll see you in the garden. Hey, welcome back. Professor Steve comes to Bloomer's each Saturday. He does. He, he does, except when he's in Florida. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but he has called yeah. in. Yeah, that's why he called. Yeah. The beat, where, yeah. <laughs> and this past week, the discussion came up while he was there. Uh, and he was actually talking to my son, Carl, that uh, where do bees go in the winter? So he ended up calling Bloomers in the Hotline, <laughs> Bloomers in the Garden Hotline, uh, to give his question. So here's his call. Good morning, Len. How are you? Uh, it's the professor. And I was up my class Saturday at 9 o'clock, as I usually am, and one of my students, Carl, had a question. His question was, what do bees do during the winter? Do they hibernate? Do they go to Florida? (laughs) I said, I will get back to you as soon as I can, Carl, for next class. So maybe you can tell me. And Julio was absent at that class. Okay. Have a good day and see you in the garden. Bye-bye. Going to the chapel and um, (laughs) sorry, ladies, Julio is off the market. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, you're getting married. That's right. You're getting married. Yep, he's coming. Look at him turning red. (laughs) (laughs) I look at you all red. Uh, Yeah, Yeah, that's that's a great thing. Julio in in a few weeks is going to be a married man. man, Wow, that's awesome. Well, I'm happy for you. Thank you. All right, the birds and the bees. Nah, you, you can learn that from somebody else. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, so where do they go? And it depends on what type of bee you're talking about. Like for most folks, you know, they think a hornet is a bee. You know, anything that stings you is a bee. <laughs> you know? So, but hornets, most of the colony dies off. Okay, including the the worker wasps um, and the old queen. What happens is they they form a new queen. And who is newly mated, mated so that she's filled with eggs and that she finds a sheltered spot to overwinter in and hibernate until the following spring. So they do not typically use their old nest. So like if you see, that's why people can go and get one of those paper wasp nests uh-huh. and that they can take it take down it without being, sometimes there's some lingers, but yeah. but once the season has passed, let's say, in the middle of winter or in spring, sometimes you'll find an empty nest. So, and that, cause they don't go back now, honeybees. Now they overwinter. Um, some, some of the hive, like I think as much as 40% of the hive can, can die. But what happens is honeybees are in the hive. They cluster into a, a like a, they call it a cluster or it's a, a ball around the queen and they they uh flex their muscle their wings and they they they're buzzing like if you go near a hive and you hear it in the middle of the winter and it's because the bees are causing natural heat around the queen and the hive itself keeps a temperature between 95 and 100 degrees and so it it keeps it active, and that that's honeybees. What wow, boy? I mean, they're talk about worker bees, and it's sometimes called a bee ball, and like in the and sometimes like because they switch spots. Like so that think about this. I, all right, so Aaron, you ever been outside where you didn't have the jacket on and it was really really cold right. and you shiver, right? Where you automatically shake. Sure, bees will do that. And that that's another way of adding warmth to the hive. And again, it's between 90 and 100 degrees that they keep the hive. And the bees in the middle will, will move outwards to the edge and they, they, they cool down where the other ones can go in. So it's, it's almost like a circular motion. And also there's, there's cut down on, on oxygen. So honeybees are in a hive 
And like I said, some will die. I mean, there's, again, 40% of the hive will die. You'll also, on warm day, warm winter days, you may see a honeybee. And it's basically cleaning out the hive. It's doing some things where it's doing some work cleaning out the hive. Uh, not often, but that does happen. You want to talk about hardy. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. Overwintering. That's right. Bumblebees uh, don't do the same thing. Um that instead that the bees look for the bee looks for a place to hibernate and when temperatures drop too low most of the bumblebees die except for the again new queens who are mated in the fall with male bumblebees and and then these future bumblebee queens i guess are they will they be princesses I, anyway I, that <laughs> the bumblebee queens okay are all big and fat and they look different uh, same thing with uh, queens from it doesn't a queen uh, honeybee does not look the same as a regular bumblebee uh, or I'm sorry regular bee or same thing with with the bumblebees so the queen is goes underground or in holes in in wood um, and to say to stay dry and when the spring comes out they meant they form they come out and they form new colonies okay. Uh, wasps are similar to hornets. The hornets basically do the same thing. And solitary bees like mason bees do not overwinter. Instead, the, the, the adult bees die off and that they uh, basically the eggs in, in their pupil stage, uh, pupil stage, they, they, they will go and they'll hatch. And then it's a new breed, um, brood, I guess is the word. And uh, where you mentioned, uh, do they go to Florida? And actually, in some cases, they do. What happens is that there are bees in hives that are brought around the country to pollinate different crops. Like, for instance, it may, they may be pollinating apples in New York State. But in the winter, they may be in Florida pollinating uh, the oranges or, or citrus. So again, it's a it's an interesting thing where it's mobile colonies, and there I can remember a few years back where they actually a truckload of bees, a tractor trailer load of bees, got into an accident, turned over, and man, you talk about a mess. So sticky mess <laughs> it is. But again, they they do a service and they pollinate so that we have uh, good fruit. So that's what bees do in the winter. We'll be back right after this. Hi, this is Len Schroeder from Bloomers in the Garden. Do you have a landscape, garden, or plant question? If so, call or text us using the Bloomers in the Garden hotline. Dial 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. Don't be shy. We want to hear from you. Call or text us and let us know what problems you're facing. Let us know how we're doing. Call or text 609-685-1880. If we use your comment on the air, we'll send you a free Bloomers t-shirt. Call or text us at 609-685-1880. That's 609-685-1880. And we'll see you in the garden. Julio, Sam tells us we're out of time. All right, we'll see you next week at this same time right here in the garden. See you in the garden.